Welcome to the new Stars podcast. What's new at Stars? On this week's episode, challenges and benefits of switching to seventh grade with Miss Laura Crowder, and what's happening in elementary school with Miss Benita Law. Podcast. I have uh, a long time uh, teacher here at Stars. Grizzled vet. A grizzled vet. I like that. Yep. Um, but she's in a new position this year, so I thought it'd be interesting to get a uh, to check in with uh, Laura Crowder. So many of you probably know her if you've had kids here at Stars because they've had her uh, as fourth grade ELA, and if they're like my kids, um, that was one of my daughter's favorite classes that she still talks about and. Usually when I get middle school kids, even up till eighth grade, they'll uh, still remember uh, Miss Crowder throwing something at them or, <laughs> or some of the awesome uh, stories or projects they did in her class, um, but usually just getting stuff thrown at them. So, uh, <laughs> but now uh, she's moving to seventh grade, so that's, that's a big change for her, um, but also a good opportunity for uh, herself and for uh, students too. So we're going to get to know Ms. Crowder um, and just have a conversation about everything this year. So here we go. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> so how long have you been at STARS actually? Because I know you were here, I got here 12 years ago and you were already here. So um, do you remember what year you came? Uh, I have been here since 2009, so 14 years. Holy crap, you're one of the... <laughs> <laughs> like a cockroach. <laughs> yeah, you're one of the OG uh, teachers here, so um, cool. And where did you start out in fourth grade then? Or No, I came and started in fifth grade Okay. when I first started, and my uh, t- t- team teacher was... Brian Runger, so that's why I switched to. I don't blame you. Yeah. You had to get <laughs> had to get away from Runger. And then I taught for <laughs> taught fourth grade for thirteen years. Thirteen years, cool. That's a lot of experience. So, um, and you guys like had some rocking EOG scores this year too, didn't you? Oh well, thank oh, you. Uh, every year, pretty much, but well, this year was like really good. So appreciate it. We yeah. had a good team. Good yeah, team. absolutely. Um, so. You taught fourth grade for all the, those years, and now this year you're going to be going into seventh grade, correct? Correct. Okay. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> have you ever you ever met a seventh grader? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was one. Was one. My daughter's one, one so which she is super excited about having you well, uh, this you. year. Yeah, don't thank me. Thank her. <laughs> no, she tell her her checks in the mail. <laughs> I will. No, she's still uh, every she actually before I came today, she's like, "Tell Miss Crowder I'm in her homeroom." I was like, "I think she knows." <laughs> Did she get her postcard? No, I snuck a peek. So. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, so you're still be doing ELA, so you, you'll be uh, in your comfort zone. But um, you've had a chance to look at some of the curriculum. So, like, um, are there any differences? I think the major, major difference in in teaching seventh grade is where they're going to have to really, really think Mm. critically, make tons of inferences, draw conclusions. All those things kids really struggle with. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, that's, um, but that's also, those are important life skills as well, so... um, you're making that change. Is there like what? What is the reason um, that you decided after all these years to, to switch from uh, like something where I'm sure you're really comfortable from year to year to like a new kind of a new uh, area for you? Well, it was over the summer, and uh, Dr. Grainer just asked if I would be interested in a mm-hmm. new opportunity. Yeah. So I just went ahead and accepted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When Wes asks you something, you're like, sure, I'll do sure, whatever you want whatever. me to. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty persuasive, right? <laughs> uh, um, so what do you think are the some of the benefits of changing grade levels? Um, I know, so fourth graders are, what, 10, 11 years old? Right. Um, so now you'll have 12, thir- 12 13. 13. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's, you're going into the preteen and teens, so that's <laughs> going to be interesting, I'm sure. But what are some of those benefits you, you've 
Well, I think one of the, the biggest ones for me is just to be reunited with previous students, like Natalie. Yeah. And I have 13 previous students in my, in my homeroom. Um, so that offers me a huge sense of familiarity. I'm glad I could say that. And comfort. <laughs> um, That's true. If you go in, you already know some of the kids, then that definitely cuts down on... Because a big part of teaching is getting to know the kids. Right. So and them getting to know you. Yeah, that, that definitely... Um, and for me, it's just the ability to revitalize my teaching career and to refresh my perspective of teaching. That's true. You can get kind of stuck in a in a rut. Um, mm-hmm. Not necessarily a bad thing, but no. yeah, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so, working with older students, mm-hmm. um, I need to develop new strategies, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, and oh. it's important as a grizzled vet <laughs> to uh, take on new challenges and continually develop my skills to better meet the needs of the students. Yeah, and it's hard to do that if you're not <clears throat> if you're not really. I mean, it's a challenge because you have new kids every year, but like t- tackling a new curriculum and a new age group is definitely um, a challenge. But I think you'll find, and you probably already know this, the older kids are. Um, can be more fun to talk with because right. we'll get you know, my sarcasm yeah exactly they, <laughs> they are well they so have to be careful but now they um you taught them that sarcasm in fourth grade so now they're <laughs> going to come to you in seventh grade without that so <laughs> but you know you can have more in-depth conversations i've found right with those seventh eighth grade uh kids which can be a good and a bad thing too <laughs> so so you've you've had pretty much the whole summer right to kind of prepare yourself so um what are some of the things you've done to to get ready for the change coming this year i spent time trying to have an understanding better understanding of the standards and expectations to the new new grade level so mm-hmm. you know i've been looking for a lot of weird nonfiction articles you know which are my my favorite oh yeah kids is kid they're kids favorite too because those are the stories that they still talk about <laughs> like the, they always talk about Krakatoa, you know. <laughs> Cube-shaped <laughs> cu- wombat poop. Exactly. Yeah, and they love the the dissecting of the owl poo or throw-up pellets, pellets or whatever. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they always love that. So I so. found, you know, I found some, and I found one on um, hospitals during the Victorian era. So uh, oh, that'll be fun. I think that will be a good, it good icebreaker. <laughs> I know a, a lot of the kids still remember the... Uh, the pharaoh where, oh, you, King Tut. Yeah, where, where you showed them how they uh they filled up the uh, canopic jars <laughs> pulled their brains out and stuff yeah kids love That's that still kind one of, of stuff. my favorites yeah i mean if you can so if you can learn um your inferencing skills and different things reading <laughs> interesting <laughs> stories like that then it definitely sticks with them more i believe you know i'm gonna yeah. definitely start with with nonfiction yeah. this year because i mean it's a new learning experience for me too and yeah. i just want to be where i'm comfortable and i have not met my team yet but i look forward to doing so and i know um, a couple of them are coming from middle school right so they'll be able to help me get a better understanding of middle school culture and, and expectations yeah that'll be good um yeah, because you will have, like, your planning period will be different because um, the middle school has electives instead of specials, and they're typically um, back-to-back. I think they're in the afternoon, mm-hmm. too. So, so at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. So you'll have a consistent planning time, which will be good, um, and less recess duty and things <laughs> like that. So there are some advantages in middle school, for sure. There are, and, I'm you know, I'm excited just, you know, working with uh, Megan and... Ridgeway yeah, Miss Ridgeway. Yeah, yeah. She's she's um, she did a really good job last uh, this past year with some difficult situations sometimes. So um, that pretty much covers as far as everything um, school related going on. Um, one really cool thing about the podcast is we kind of people that don't know our staff, we can kind of. <laughs> <laughs> which, if you don't know Miss Crowder, you'll get to know her soon. But. Um, is that we have a chance in just kind of like a conversational way to get to know uh, some of our staff. So um, I know, like, Miss Crowder, her son went here years ago, so I taught, had a chance to teach and work with uh, Eric, who uh, – what's he up to now? I know oh, he, sorry. No, sorry. He went, I know he went through – you know, he was uh, – went through the Marines. Yeah, he um, gra- well, he started in fifth grade, and at that time he was here. In the really- Marines? Yeah, in the Marines. That's impressive. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so he was here until eighth grade and yep. then um, went over to Pinecrest. Right. And after graduation, he w- went into the Marine Corps 
and um, was stationed at Camp Pendleton mm-hmm. in California. Right. Um, he's out now. Right now, he's just completing schools. He's with the National Guard in, in Wilmington. Cool. How's he like that so still... far? I haven't seen <laughs> so, him in a while, so. He loves it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good opportunity to learn sarcasm. No. So, <laughs> no, he no. I think especially he really likes the people that he's. That's, that's that good. He's that makes a difference. With. That's why we're still here at Stars. <laughs> right, right, and um, you know, just looking for he. What he's doing right now, he's a cavalry scout. Okay. So you know, he may have some opportunities to go to Eastern Europe, which he's he's excited about. Yeah, looking forward to. Awesome. And, you know, he's you know he's like me. He's a late bloomer. Yeah. So you know, just still looking for figuring what, it all out. What career he wants to yeah. pursue? Well, he's a he's an intelligent kid. He'll figure that out. Thank so, you. yeah. <laughs> like his mother. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's uh, your daughter uh, Anna? What's she up to? She's doing uh, X-ray, right. right? So she's working in Rayford, mm-hmm. and she's an X-ray technologist. Mm-hmm. Really, really enjoying that. Cool. A lot. And both of them moved to Rayford this summer. Oh, okay. So they have have an apartment in Rayford. They're both doing well. Good. Thanks for uh, sharing that um, that with us. It is kind of uh, it's good to get to know everyone uh, a little bit more. So, um, you can talk about where I grew up. Yeah, where'd you grow up? By so, the way, I grew up in England. Okay, and um, I was over there. For, that's why you're so weird. That's why I'm so weird. And my dad was in the in the Air Force. Yeah. over there, and then I came back, went to Carolina, and uh, after that, I was a police officer. For a while in Carborough. Jeez, and why don't you just know. try some different careers out? <laughs> <laughs> and then switch to teaching. Yeah. No, the, I'm sure that the police background works out well in education. <laughs> Especially in middle school. <laughs> that's right. It'll serve you well, for sure. Um, no, that's really cool to get some background. So, Now, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to share and just to have a conversation with me. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's always fun. Miss <laughs> um, <laughs> Crowder and I get along pretty well, so... <laughs> <laughs> Even though we can't sit next to each other in uh, meetings. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, we're not allowed to sit beside each other anymore. But um, that's for another podcast, though. <laughs> no, we're, I appreciate it. Uh, and next on the podcast will be uh, Miss Law. So um, we'll move on to that. Thank you again. Thank you. Up next, elementary school updates with the director of elementary school, Ms. Benita Wong. Okay, so I'm here with Ms. Law, the elementary uh, school principal here at STARS, um, and we're just going to have a conversation about um, kind of what to expect this year and then just get to, to know uh, Miss Law a little better for those of you that have not had the chance to meet her. So, um, good morning. Hi, good morning. <laughs> hey, appreciate you sitting down uh, with me. Uh, so, Miss Law and I actually pretty much started teaching at STARS at the same time and in the same grade level, mm-hmm. so in, in second How grade. How long were you here before I came? I was here, I don't know, like four or five months. Oh, not even a full year. <laughs> not even a full year, no. Uh, we, were, uh, we were second grade, uh, uh, the second grade team, <laughs> when we only had two classes of second grade here at STARS. That was like, what, 12 years ago? Mm-hmm. That was in 2012? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, yeah, I came in 11 and you came yeah. in at 12, mm-hmm. yeah. So, cool. So, you, how long did you, actually, let's start before that. So, what, before you came to STARS, mm-hmm. um, what were you, uh, mm-hmm. what were you up to? My my timeline at STARS was 2012. So before that, my journey in education started in 2006. Okay. Okay. I graduated with my undergrad, not knowing what direction to go. That happens. And my parents were done paying for me. And <laughs> <laughs> um, I became a TA, a teacher assistant, mm-hmm. to Miss Jessup. I, oh, okay. I, I graduated and I was a TA in a third grade classroom for about two or three years while I was going back to get my certification okay, and licensure. So I left my TA position and went to 
in West End. West End Elementary? Yeah, yeah. I went to West yeah, End I think so, yeah. Elementary. And you drove a bus, too, didn't you? I drove a bus. <laughs> have my, that, that's why I tell everybody, it's not a, I drove a bus. And this and not, you know, our communal routes that we have. No, 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 no. Uh-huh. It was stopping. Every stop, it, yeah. was, it was so stopping. So, if, yeah. if our listeners are like me, I have fun picturing you driving a bus. Yeah. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five foot nothing uh-huh. driving a bus, that's right? That's right. <laughs> so, I did my student teaching there. In the midst of my student teaching, my advisor called and said that the someone from a school in Moore County needs replacement, mm-hmm. a short term right. teacher. And am I am I willing to do it? And I was like, anything to stop the student teaching, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. So that's when I came here. So that was in two thousand and twelve, and I came here with the understanding that I would just uh, finish off that school year. Yeah. And Dr. Grainer called. You came into a mess, too. Oh, my goodness. I remember that. Like I, we, we, barely, we barely had internet mm-hmm. and no computers. It was kids. worksheet yeah. central. And it was just, I didn't know what I was doing, yeah. right? Um, and you were such a gem sharing your plans with me. But. <laughs> what what the listeners can't see is that you put quotation <laughs> Quotation marks on my plans. So, yeah, th- that was my first year doing second grade. And teaching. You're like, really? So, right. Yeah. So, uh, how many kids were in those classes? I had 12. Right. 12 kids. And I remember thinking, man, this classroom is small. <laughs> yes, with 12. <laughs> so, um, I was under the assumption, you know, I would finish up the school year mm-hmm. and then I would move to wherever, wherever yeah. to get a teaching job. And Dr. Grainer called me over the summer and he said, hey... Would you mind coming back? I said, was the teacher not returning? He said, let me find out. So he called me right back and said no. So that's when I started second grade. And I taught second grade from 2013 until 2019. Mm -hmm. And then I got enrolled into a leadership program. And went from there. Cool. That's right. Because you switched the year. Let's see. Right before Natalie was in second grade. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had bought me those books from the book fair. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, you're you going to have <laughs> Natalie next year. You want your books back. And what grade is Natalie going to? Seventh. So that would make sense. She would have been uh-huh. in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Yep. That's yeah. right. So, that's I still want my books back. You still want your books back. <laughs> 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 All right. So that's how I got here. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And you've been um, the elementary school principal since then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. My first full year... I came in during that 1920, mm-hmm. and I wasn't even doing full-scale administration duties. Yeah. I was doing, I was kind of half in my days right. doing half leadership mm-hmm. role and responsibility type things, and then the other half helping in other areas. So, I really call my first full year 2021. Right during COVID. Right during COVID, yeah. <laughs> well, so. Welcome to Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was an interesting yeah. year. Yeah. Um, I think we handled it pretty good here at Stars. Though. Oh, we did. Yeah, we did. I think so, yeah. especially considering how crazy everything yes, was. Absolutely. Um, so, what were some of the you think the biggest um, challenges going from teaching uh, second grade and then going into the admin side? Oh, the biggest challenge then, and it's still my biggest one now. Mm-hmm. You know, in the classroom. The teacher sets the tone. Absolutely. The teacher creates yeah. the schedule. As soon as they walk in the door. As soon yeah. as they walk in the door. Yeah. So I used to always laugh with my students when I was in the classroom. And I say, you know, by whenever spring comes, I'm just coming. You you all can teach yourselves at this point, right? I've covered the standards and we're just doing some spiraling and review. Right. I say, you all can teach yourselves. Just doing some reinforcement. And, yeah. and I knew what I was walking into. It was the same kind of, yeah. you know, regimented just schedule. Right. Because you had your classroom yes. set up, and that's yes. they knew what the deal was. Yeah. In leadership mm-hmm. administration, it's completely opposite. Never know what I'm walking into, <laughs> and I'm still, yeah. and I still haven't, haven't fit. Like that's yeah. still new to me. Like I don't know. So that's the difference between mm-hmm. having one classroom and then having mm-hmm. fourteen classrooms. Yes, that, well, twenty. Yeah, twenty. Excuse me. Twenty. <laughs> 20 classrooms. Come a long ways since that, that, those 12 yeah, so kids in second grade. Yeah. Some days it'll feel like I have a day that's just lax and yeah. I can get inside of classrooms and see mm-hmm. what's going on and yeah. just engage with 
everyone. And then some days I don't feel like I have a second to. Right. You never even get out of the office. Yeah. No, no, I'm out of yeah. the office the whole time. Oh, that's okay. the, you know, and that's another thing. <laughs> yeah. You you remember me in the classroom? I stayed in my classroom. Uh-huh. Leave me alone. I'm in here with my teacher. That's right. Door teacher. locked. Leave me alone. I'm doing it. Yeah. If you find me in this office, it's it's a rarity. Yeah. Because I'm in the hallways, but to me, that's what leadership should be. You should be yeah. visible and. Be, oh yeah, that helps. Yeah. Uh, it helps when the kids know who you are. Too. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, now you've had some challenges this summer too, correct? Correct. As far as, uh, teacher feels, shortage. Yeah. I mean, we've had, we've had some expected, some unexpected, uh, just, and I had the same conversation with Megan in middle school cause she had actually some of yours is her fault cause she stole, <laughs> stole mm, one of your right. teachers. Yeah. But, um, so, um, is there a difference between trying to get a teacher to come here now and trying to get, well, it'd probably be, Wes could probably speak to that better, but it was probably harder to find a teacher that wanted to come work at STARS like 10 years ago. As oh, no. To, Funny story. Yeah. Whenever I got that call from my advisor to come work here, yeah, I asked my cooperating teacher at the time, I said, do you know anything about this school? And she was like, eh, it's, I, from what I know, yeah. you know, it's, under new leadership and yeah. he's cleaning out house so i mean he's done just that um but well, i wonder now i bet back then it was hard to get oh, i had a yeah. similar conversation like when i interviewed with Wes to come and do second grade i mm-hmm. told my dad and he was like um I'm pretty sure i just saw them in the paper that they were <laughs> they were about to lose their charter <laughs> so yeah um so i imagine you have a bigger pool of uh teachers that actually want to come like yes, and saying. normally th- this summer has been more challenging, but <clears throat> we have a global issue going on with teacher shortages. Yeah, we really right? do. So with that, it's not – at about a month ago, I was like – I was kind of taking it – is it me? You know, <laughs> and then I'm like, no. I woke up the next morning, and I I think it was a Wake County, was having a jummer, summer job fair Yeah. because they were 128 – teachers short to start the school year well being two teachers short doesn't seem that bad then. Uh, one, one, <laughs> one sounds me. real yeah. good yeah. you know so so with that being said and yeah. then a lot of the um a lot of the teachers that are not returning mm-hmm. i'll be honest it's due it's family related yeah. none of it is you know i just don't want to be here because this is a great place to be yeah oh yeah the ones that happened over the summer were definitely not yes no yeah mm-hmm. um but i do have a a lot of new teachers coming in. Yeah. So for me, I am. Last year, I didn't have any new teachers coming in, did I? Um, last year. You, in fourth grade, you did. You had uh, Deemer and I had Deemer. Sprinkle. I had right. Deemer and Sprinkle. Okay. So now this year, I have an. Yeah, do you about, have a list you can. I have a list. So let me count. I have one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven. I have seven new certified teachers uh, coming in. Cool. Do you? Uh, what grade level are they coming in? Because I'm, I'll get them on the podcast too. So, oh, okay. So I have. I, you can hit any grade level. Okay. I have some um, new faces in all of them. What about uh, kindergarten? Do we have new faces there? Well, in kindergarten we have Miss Cagle, Miss now Miss Rice, who right. she's. So she's not a new face because she's, she's not been a new TA face. Here for she's a not a new years. face, but yeah. yes, she is. This will be her first year teaching. That's exciting. Yeah. yeah, she'll be. She'll be really good. Yeah. Okay, what about uh, first, first grade? First grade, I have a teacher, Miss Flowers, is coming, mm-hmm. as well as my most recent most recent hire is Miss Eason. Okay. She was a TA as well. She'll be... Right, okay. She'll be in a lead teacher role. Yeah, she, was, gr- she was a first grade She was a TA, first grade. Right? She okay. came mid-year. Right. She was a first grade awesome. TA. Awesome. So she'll just switch over to the lead then in first grade. Yeah. Grade. Second grade, I have two. Okay. Mrs. Oaks and Mrs. Kalehi. Right, but yeah. and the your third teacher's not new to stars, but she is switching down to second grade. Yes, right? yes. Miss Nixon. She, when she her first year, yeah. Did she do second she, for one she, or two? Uh, two years. She did yeah. two years of second, mm-hmm. shifted to third, and came back to second. So I feel good with those two new teachers. Yeah. That someone who has been here for at least a handful of years right. knows stars, knows how we operate, oh, yeah. and, and you know she can. Both my kids. At, uh, that year had her had Miss Nixon for second grade. Yeah. They had a great year, so yeah, she'll be good. So, uh, what about third grade? Third grade, I have my same 
three. So, still have Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Yeah. Miss Lester, Miss Cotton, but Miss Deemer is coming from fourth to third now. Well, good. She's is that not, not new, exciting? She's not a new face, but she, uh, just a new new grade level. So. Yeah. No, she she was great. a new face last year. Yeah, so. Miss Deemer's great. So that'll be, that'll, that's a really strong team there. Yes. So what about uh, fourth, fourth grade? grade yeah. Miss Weiss and Miss Sprinkle are yeah. still there. And then, and then Mr. Joyner stole. Miss Crowder. Yes. Moved her, I mean, or so. Ms. No, he was polite about it. He kind of asked me first. Yeah. Sort of, kind of. Yeah. In his we, a- asking tone. Right. What's going to happen. Miss Crowder and I just talked about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we have joining Miss Wrinkle and Miss Weiss, Miss Gordon, and Miss Howard. Okay. So, a lot. Cool. So, we'll. I um, we'll get them on the podcast as well so we can get yeah. to know them. That's okay. kind of selfish, too, because I want to get to know all. Our new, we have a ton of new teachers. Yes, so. <laughs> we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. So. Which is a good thing. They all seem to be really excited. So, yeah. And um, and Miss Ridgeway seemed really excited about all the ones she hired as, yeah. and as well as, uh, as the coming school year um, is concerned. What are some of the, is there anything exciting going on you know of? Or I know we ended the year really well, right? Mm-hmm. Our EFG yes. scores yes. were like, what, the best we've ever had pretty mm-hmm. much? Today. Yeah. Today, mm-hmm. that's pretty awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what are some of the things that you guys have done to improve those? I know, especially in uh, third and fourth, where we added that fourth teacher, we have a a, um, a neat uh, spot where they're um, not necessarily a subject area, but they kind of what do we call that? A flex. We call it a flex, and how I explain it to people is, we have actually two. Mm-hmm. In third and fourth. So where we have our core math and reading teachers, we have our flex teachers Mm -hmm. who one of those teachers will teach some science and then talk to Mr. Jackson, our third grade math teacher, and Mm -hmm. say, hey, are there any standards you want me to brush up on? Are there any standards you want me to reteach? Or do you want to not teach that standard? And I go ahead and front load it for you, and Mm -hmm. then you come back to it. So those other two teachers on the team really do, really do provide yeah. phenomenal support. Just that support is yeah. major, is major. Yeah, so you have, like, if Mr. Jackson's introducing a new um, skill in math, mm-hmm. and they that gets reinforced throughout the day. Mm-hmm. So if they didn't catch it the first time, they have that extra opportunity. Yes. Yeah. And then you know how I feel about... Same standard, different styles. So yes. you and I could both be teaching elapsed oh, yeah. time. It looks completely different. Absolutely, every kid yeah. is not going to learn it the same way. So it yeah. is good to have those different, those different styles. I feel yeah. like between that, between us using our Fridays the way mm-hmm. we use them, and boy, do they use them! They use them for RTI Fridays. Yeah. Can you explain that? Because teaching uh, specials and electives, I don't uh, get to see that on Fridays. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's just a couple of the things they've done on Fridays. Uh, on Fridays, when we know we're about to have a an early release Fridays, that POC prior to, mm-hmm. we put all the kids of in that grade level in a bucket. Yeah. Okay, it's not by home room. Mm-hmm. What do those? And we pull them out by what they need, and that's what we teach. So we've been some Fridays is math heavy. Yeah. We are all four teachers, or mm-hmm. at least three of the four are hitting math. Yeah. Some Fridays are reading heavy. Three of the four teachers are hitting reading. Yeah. You know, so it just depends on that's the beauty in it all. Yeah. It depends on what they're getting what they need. And we all need that, right? It's good that yeah, it's yeah. good to have that flexibility Absolutely. where we can do that. Yeah, for sure. So, so I think that's made a world of difference just with our achievement and proficiency. Right. Well, obviously, it's it's shown. Yeah. So one of the the highest, as far as the school um, school report cards, mm-hmm. one of the highest achieving in Moore County. So yeah, which is a definite change from. And I feel like we have some very confident teachers. Yeah, you, you you know, and we have teachers even still. I think about some of my veteran teachers. They still want to you know grow their best. They they've mm-hmm. been teaching for ten years. Yeah. However, you know, sometimes we get stuck in the mindset of teachers, oh, I've been doing this, yeah. and I'll just keep doing the same regimented thing. But right. I can honestly say I have some te- I have a lot of teachers who they are confident, and mm-hmm. they want to continue being right. l- learning. Right. They're not afraid to switch no. things mm-hmm. up. And, yeah. So. Awesome. Well, it's good to have, have a staff like that. Yeah. So. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I okay. appreciate you sitting down. And, Anytime. Um, 
letting us get to know you a little better. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. I look forward to speaking with you all later. Now, what can I, where can I find this podcast? Um, you can find it on Spotify or on YouTube. Okay. Um, there's a link on the school website okay. and on the uh, the PTO Facebook page as well. Okay. So. All right. Well, I look forward to a great school year and hopping on your podcast again. All right. Thank you for watching and listening to the Stars Charter School Podcast. Until next time, have a great day.